out of the distant past. An ancient Filipino creation myth recounts the humble origins of man. Accordingly, when the earth was new, little existed except sky, water, and a small but potent bamboo reed. From this reed, the first male and female humans stepped into the world and breathed life. Today, the Kalinga refers to several culturally related groups living in the northern provinces of Luzon, the largest of several islands that comprise the Philippines. Earliest mention of the Kalinga dates back to the 1600s when Dominican missionaries and Spanish armies first encountered the group. The term Kalinga embodies the group's warrior-like nature, which once inspired the taking of heads, a tradition that the group abandoned only recently in the 1970s. For the Kalinga, headhunting was a last resort for dealing with intertribal conflicts, mostly involving territorial disputes. A warrior who takes his first head earns the highly regarded social status of a mingo, which entitles him to the respect of his peers and the admiration of females. He may don elaborately designed tattoos as symbols of his prestige. The heads which mingo warriors once claimed in battle continue to adorn Kalinga homes as prized trophies and heirlooms. Today, however, the Kalinga attempt peacefully to resolve their differences through formal peace pacts that encourage closer social and economic ties. For the Kalinga, music and dance bring people together and reinforce communal bonds. Generally, the men play instruments, whereas the women dance. The Kalingas perform music for any festive occasion, including marriages, fiestas, peace pact observances, and rites of passage. In the past, Mingol warriors chanted while dancing with their victim's head, perched atop a spear. Sometimes they sang traditional chants which cursed their slain enemies and described heroic feats of battle. The Kalinga make most of their traditional musical instruments using a species of bamboo which is now endangered and requires a government permit to harvest. Benny Sekong, a Kalinga musical instrument maker, is one of the few bearers of this permit. At a young age, Benny learned to play several of his group's musical instruments. In his early adult years, he left the province to study dentistry in the city of Baguio. Sadly, he noticed that few Kalinga instrument makers remained. To preserve the tradition, Benny went around to the villages collecting instruments. After studying their construction, he began building the instruments using trial and error methods. Today, he is a highly regarded and skilled craftsman, as well as performer on the instruments he builds. The tenali, or nose flute, has four finger holes. Sound is produced using one nostril to blow across a hole in the node or a solid end of the bamboo. At night, males usually play the tenali as a solo instrument to serenade women or to provide entertainment for oneself. Using a small, thin length of bamboo, Benny constructs the tenali, 
first by cutting extraneous bamboo to expose the node at one end. Taking one of several different sized irons that have been sitting in a fire, Benny bores the sound hole in the node. In the West, instrument makers closely measure the length of woodwinds, such as the metal flute, to ensure that it will render an exact pitch. However, the Kalinga approach is much more flexible. Instead, Benny eyes the length of bamboo and arbitrarily chooses a point at which to cut and shorten the flute. To set the first finger hole or thumb hole, Benny uses a small stick to locate the middle of the bamboo. Here he bores the thumb hole. He places the second finger hole exactly halfway between the thumb hole and the end of the bamboo. To set the third finger hole, Benny measures a distance of two fingers up from the second finger hole. To place the fourth finger hole, Benny measures a distance of two fingers down from the first finger hole. He checks to ensure that the distance between the first and third finger holes is slightly more than two fingers. After marking the holes, he bores them. The tonali is best played with one nostril blocked, so Benny uses a small leaf from a nearby bush to plug one of his nostrils. To Westerners, perhaps the most unusual of all Kalinga musical instruments is the Balingbing, which is designed to produce a sound that has a distinct buzzing quality. Males usually perform on the Balingbing during the harvest time, while walking along trails or as group entertainment. In the past, males played the Balingbing to welcome warriors back from headhunting expeditions. The buzzing sound of the balingbing is created by two small cracks or slits that run partly down the length of the bamboo. A rattan strip wrapped around the circumference of the instrument keeps the slits from traveling too far down the length of the tube, which could cause it to split in half. One can also move the rattan strip upwards to increase the instrument's pitch. Moving it downwards lowers the pitch.
Here Joe begins by skillfully carving out the two tips of the instrument. He makes a small incision on each side of the instrument, then pulls the tips apart to create the slits. Throughout construction, he continually tests the instrument and makes adjustments. For instance, he can shorten the tips which increase the pitch of the instrument. Shaving off bamboo along the sides of the tips lowers the pitch of the instrument. Joe bores a small hole near the base of the tube. This hole, when opened and closed by the thumb, embellishes the character of the sound in a distinct manner. Joe continues to make fine adjustments to the instrument's pitch and tone quality. Here Benny demonstrates the sound of the instrument using the thumb hole. A complete set of bling bing contains six instruments. The tombi is an idiophone struck with a small stick or mallet. Young teenage boys generally play the tombi to celebrate marriage ceremonies, fiestas, special occasions, and festivals honoring a formal peace pact that the Kalinga observe with other tribal groups in their region. To construct the tombi, Benny's worker selects large pieces of bamboo. The worker begins by stripping off the outer layer of bamboo to reveal a smooth layer underneath. By removing long strips from the surface, he shapes two grooves. The grooves will hold a bridge that supports the instrument's strings. Next, he chisels out the sound hole. Next, he weaves rattan strips around the circumference of each end of the instrument. Benny's workers make these strips separately by running them through circular holes of varying sizes until the desired thickness is obtained. After carving the bridges out of bamboo scraps, he fits them into the grooves underneath the strings. Next, he carves a plate to cover the rectangular sound hole.
Using a small mallet, the player strikes the plate to produce a sound. Each instrument in the Tombi Ensemble contributes one note. It is the combination of these notes in sequence that completes the melody. In Western terminology, this is called Hockett style. The kulitong is a plucked zither, which men play at night as a solo instrument. It has six strings, four on top and two on the bottom. First, Benny cuts out the individual strings. He then weaves two thin rattan strips around the circumference of each end of the bamboo. He then drives a bamboo wedge into the opening, which keeps it from closing. This enables the sound to escape from inside the instrument. To support the strings, Benny carefully places bridges under each of them. The placement of the bridges also determines the pitches of the strings. Since the bridges are movable, he can adjust them when fine-tuning the instrument. The kulibao, or jaw harp, is a solo instrument usually played by bachelors desiring to serenade single females in the group. It is the smallest of Kalinga musical instruments. However, because of its fine detail, it perhaps requires the most dexterity and skill to make. Joe is so skilled that he can make one in about 12 minutes. Several small scars on Joe's hands attest to this claim. Joe begins with a small, thin, rectangular piece of bamboo that has already been shaped to the approximate length and width of what the finished instrument will be. He carves a small hole toward one end of the harp. Here the tongue will separate from the body. With a final cut along the length, he frees the tongue and then refines the shape of the instrument.
an important technique for strengthening and improving the sound quality of bamboo instruments, such as the kulibau, is to cure the instrument over fire. With larger pieces of bamboo, Benny cures them over an open oven. Benny and his workers continue to preserve the art of bamboo musical instrument making. Their efforts contribute a compelling texture to the tapestry of man and human expression. <laughs>